today I'm going to speak, be speaking about uh, some of my past experiences um, in co-op as an undergraduate research assistant. Um, and so I want, uh, I've been working with the Zudomirsky Lab or Zudomirsky Lab Group, as well as the Grandfield Research Group over the past two summers. Uh, and this image at the top is actually one that I took during my first summer. It's an electron micrograph of one of the biomaterials that I created. Um, so first I'll introduce myself. My name's Andrew D'Elia. Um, I'm a third year BNG BME student in the iBiomed program, specializing in the material stream. Um, I'm a materials fellow in the department. Um, I'm also a teaching assistant for the iBiomed first year design course. Um, I'm an undergraduate researcher, which you'll learn a lot more about today. Um, I'm also an iBiome ambassador, and I'm quite heavily involved in the community with the McMaster Engineering Society and other stuff like that. Um, and a fun fact about me is I'm actually a Taekwondo instructor, and I used to do that on the weekends uh, before COVID-19 started. Um, so if, yeah, if you have any questions about any one, of these, uh, any one of these things, you can always reach out to me at any time. I'd love to speak about any one of them. Uh, so today's agenda looks a little bit like this. Um, so first I'll talk a little bit about co-op and biomaterials in general. Um, and specifically research opportunities, um, what they look like in biomaterials and how to get them. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my research experience, some of the work I did, um, a few pieces of, of advice. Now on the other side of things, having done some research placements in the past, um, what I wish I knew. Um, and then we're gonna have a few words from Dr. Catherine Granfield who has generously brought her time to uh, be here tonight. Um, so firstly, co-op and biomaterials and research opportunities. Um, so biomaterials is a quite um, large field. Um, so it's kind of helpful perhaps to kind of split it up into some categories that you might be able to work in. Um, so biomaterials, I, this is by no means a, a rule, but these are some of the things that I saw as being potential options um, for working in biomaterials. Um, so you can work in implantable materials, um, which is some of the work that I actually did in my own research. Um, and that could be split up further into the bone implants, stents and valves, uh, blood contacting materials, surgical polymers such as sutures that actually go within the body. Um, you could specialize in medical therapies, so um, designing pharmaceuticals, grafts and tissues that are also used in surgery, biointerfacing materials such as those that go into um, uh, dialysis machines and stuff like that. Um, you could also specialize in surfaces and biosensing. Um, so I did a little bit of work in this field as well, specifically uh, with regards to bioactive coatings. Um, but you could also work on antimicrobial films, uh, which is something else that my, uh, my uh, the Grandfield Research Group does. Um, and lastly, um, you can work in characterization. Um, again, I'll touch a little bit on this in my, in my particular research. Um, but you could go into microscopy, in vitro or in vivo studies. Um, you could do just basic uh, materials properties characterization. Um, so the, the options in biomaterials are quite broad and they really um, intersect uh, both actual medical treatments and medical care um, while staying true to everything that materials engineering is really about. So where can you find it? So I always like to say that a, a researcher's greatest gift is the internet. Um, and that's how I went about finding my research placement. Um, so the best ideas uh, would be to look at university research labs first, they're the easiest to find. Um, so you want to go to the faculty website. Um, specifically, you're looking for schools or departments of biomedical engineering, materials, material science, pharmacy, medicine, dentistry, chemical engineering. All of these um, will likely have faculty members that um, work in some uh, portion of materials engineering and biomedical engineering um, and specialize in biomaterials. Um, and they might work on different things. They might work on synthesis. They might work on uh, characterization or actually testing these materials. So um, there are plenty of options available and it's really just about looking at them uh, through the magic of the internet. Um, something else that you might consider um, are private research facilities. Um, so I know that a bunch of big pharmaceutical companies uh, may have their own research and development labs that you could possibly uh, reach out to. I know that uh, where Leah works, uh, AstraZeneca, they actually also have their own research and department, uh, sorry, development ring. So um, there's plenty of opportunities to also go into industry uh, and work with actual industry leaders. So uh, next I'll be talking a little bit about my research experience. Um, and firstly, how I got into research. So my um, path into research was a little bit unorthodox. Um, it wasn't uh, as straightforward as, as I might think. Um, I actually started by contacting some of my professors looking for volunteer opportunities. Uh, so at first I didn't really think students actually did research in the summer, I was quite naive, um, but I'm really glad that I reached out in the first place. Um, so after looking for volunteer opportunities, um, I started to um, set up meetings with, with these professors that I was interested in working with um, to discuss my possible research interests. Um, and then we actually started getting to talking about actual summer research opportunities, um, which was a little bit different from what I was looking for, but definitely um, 
still a really awesome uh, opportunity to get involved in research and see what it was like. Um, so after the, having those long conversations, I ended up applying for um, two NSERC USRAs these past two years. Um, and thanks to the help of Dr. Granfield and Dr. Zinemerski, I was really fortunate to begin working in research uh, both in May of 2019 and this summer, May of 2020. So um, what is undergraduate research like? Um, so firstly, you can expect that all researchers will work under the supervision of a principal investigator. So this is usually the faculty member that kind of leads the research group. So in my case, this would have been uh, Dr. Catherine Granfield and Dr. Igor Zinemerski. Um, and usually you're working on um, contributing to projects that are relevant to their overall research cluster. Um, so you could be working on a project that we're, they're working on directly. You might be working on something that one of their grad students is working on. Um, you might be just helping around the lab. Um, and basically anything that you know research kind of entails. Um, so something that you will likely be um, exposed to as well is you usually will be paired with a graduate student to guide um, your day-to-day -day initiatives, your day-to-day -day activities. Um, and so I actually, because I belonged to two labs for one summer, um, I had a PhD student that kind of oversaw my work um, in both research groups. So work will range from data analysis to hands-on lab work. You might actually be working with chemicals or preparing uh, samples or actually, you know, look, uh, testing materials and stuff like that. Uh, or you may be just, um, as I said, helping the research group grow as a whole by doing any kind of activities here and there that they may need you to do. So a day in the life kind of looks like this. Um, so you might start off waking up in the morning around seven to eight, moving on to travel time, working in the lab. You might have lunch at some point, hopefully a group meeting. Uh, and then you might be back on the lab, back in the lab for the rest of the day. Um, so this is again by no means the rule, but this was generally what my um, research experience looked like. Um, usually we had group meetings once a week, um, but in general, um, I found that I would, uh, you know, have two blocks of time in the day where I was working in the lab um, or um, doing research that I would then use to kind of inform my decisions in the lab later on. Um, so hopefully this is a nice little uh, graphic that shows you what a day-to-day or a day in the life of a research student might be. Other research activities that I really enjoyed um, and wanted to bring forward include um, check-ins and progress reports with my supervisor. Um, I really enjoyed being able to talk to them one-on-one -on -one and talk about my own research interests and what I could do in their lab uh, to further my own professional development. Um, I had the opportunity to pursue my own project ideas and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, I also was really fortunate to belong to a lab that um, enjoyed having socials and team building activities. So that was really fun as well. Um, and then I also got to the more academic side of things. Um, literature review is a big part of research and paper writing uh, kind of follows literature review. So um, I did a lot of that during uh, this summer specifically because of COVID-19 and you know reduced um, access to labs. Um, and lastly, there are also opportunities to kind of showcase your work. So oftentimes I would present my findings at group meetings. Uh, and there was also opportunities to present at poster presentations um, and three minute thesis competitions uh, from time to time. So next I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I actually did. Um, so my research uh, kind of uh, lies uh, at the intersection of the two lab groups that I worked with. Um, so I was responsible for fabricating and characterizing different biomaterials that would improve um, implant outcomes in, in patients in the long term. Uh, so I was working on creating functional biomaterial coatings that would go on the surface of these implants and improve the way that um, bone cells um, and other types of cells may be able to adhere to them and grow on, on, on them to improve the success of these implants. So um, this is kind of, I just wanted to bring forward my two research uh, uh, supervisors. So on the left, you'll see Dr. Igor Sinemerski and on the right, you'll see Catherine Granfield. Um, and now I'm gonna break it down into kind of what I did in each of their labs. So in the Zidemirsky group, I, again, I, um, I worked a little bit more on the fabrication side, but we still did do some type of characterization. Um, so a lot of my work include, included actually working uh, hands-on with chemicals. So I, I did a lot of um, colloidal synthesis. I was actually mixing powders and liquids together to create these different um, materials. Um, and then I would um, use um, a process called electrophoretic deposition to actually make them stick to the surface. Um, so that they could be uh, kind of used as a coating for these implants. Um, so then I, um, a lot of the work that we did in this lab continued into characterization. So I used some really interesting techniques such as X-ray diffraction, um, Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, contact angle, the list goes on, uh, but that's just to name a few. In the Granfield Research Group, 
A lot of what I uh, did had to do with the characterization side of things, but I also did a little bit of fabrication as well. Um, so I worked with um, one of our grad students, uh, Joe Deering, um, to uh, look at how to 3D metal print um, or using selective laser, laser melting, um, actual, actual porous um, implants that could be used to kind of model um, a large scale porous implant that could be used for the body. Um, we also did a lot of work um, creating hydrogel coatings um, that weren't electrophoretically kind of applied, but uh, were still able to kind of coat the surfaces of these implants. And then from the characterization uh, side of things, we did a lot. We, um, we did everything from hardness testing uh, in, in collaboration with the um, uh, MMRI. Uh, we worked uh, with cells uh, and conducted in vitro tests to see the success of these in, uh, implant materials. Um, we did a lot of electron microscopy work to characterize the surface of these um, materials. Um, and with electron microscopy comes a lot of sample preparation. So I did uh, get a lot of that under my belt as well. So um, just to share some uh, of my actual work on the right, you'll see some of the coatings that I created over my time with the Zetomirsky group. Um, so in the top right, you'll see um, one of the coatings actually applied to the surface of uh, one of these metal print, uh, 3D metal printed implants. Um, you'll see some other materials that I created. Some of those um, had, um, hydroxyapatite, which is a bone crystal. Some of them had antibiotics. Um, and then on the bottom left, you'll see some of the actual data analysis that I performed. Um, that's X-ray diffraction and Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy that's being pictured there. And lastly, you're actually um, seeing a picture of me uh, creating one of these coatings in the lab. So then what's really cool is that the Grandfield Research Group really built on all of the things that I did in the lab with the Zinomirsky group. Um, so next, I would actually characterize these materials. I'd look at what they looked like under the microscope. Um, I'd test them with cells. Um, I'd perform different tests to see if we could get them on the surface of actual 3D porous implants. Um, I also did a little bit of work um, specifically in electron microscopy and not so much with bioactive coatings. So in the bottom right, um, that's a picture that one of my PhD supervisors, uh, Lisa, worked on. Um, we used um, something called ionic liquid uh, to actually facilitate hydrated um, images of bone in electron microscopy, which is, uh, if you know anything about electron microscopy, uh, you know that wet things can't go in the microscope. So this was a really, really interesting thing for us to do. So I'm really proud to say that out of all this work, um, I was, I'm, I'm happy and proud to say that I'm actually a, a, a um, an author of three papers that are currently out um, and published. And um, I'm a co-author on two that are currently in draft. Um, so some of my work, uh, you can see it right here on the right. Um, and I'm just trying to really drive home the point that there is a lot of opportunity here in research. Um, a lot of these papers are out of my first year. Um, so the fact, like I was very fortunate to belong to two labs that really empowered me to do my own work and pursue my own interests. Um, and uh, I, I owe my success in, in, uh, in, in these publications to them. So some of my advice, um, uh, I want to share this just for any of you, uh, you, you out there that are looking for possible research placements in the future. Um, so why research? Well, I went into research because it was a chance to test the waters of, of research itself, grad school and academia. Those are things that I was interested in possibly pursuing as a career in the future. So it was a really good opportunity to see if it was actually right for me. Um, I had the chance to gain hands on lab skills, uh, lab skills and develop a critical mindset that I then brought back to my studies um, when, I, when I went to second year and now third year. I felt like I really developed a lot of more analytical um, thinking tools that I used and applied in my actual courses, which was really interesting. Um, I had the chance to contribute to the scientific community, which I found super fulfilling. I apologize about my dog barking in the background. Um, I had the chance to seek mentorship from some amazing faculty members. Uh, both Dr. Zinomirsky and Dr. Granfield have been incredible mentors to me. Um, and it was also a chance to establish my own career and earn my co-op designation at the same time. Some caveats and considerations I want to bring forward. Um, your supervisor, colleagues, and projects can really change the experience that you have in research. And I really want to emphasize this because um, while it's, you know, it can be tough to secure a research placement, it's also really important that you enjoy the work that you're doing once you get that placement. So don't sacrifice your own interests and your own kind of uh, self-fulfillment simply because, you know, someone's finally offered you a job. I really consider, uh, sorry, encourage you to um, reach out to a professor whose research you'd enjoy um, and only sign a contract once you realize that the job that you're gonna be doing is something that you're interested in. Um, I've had a couple of friends work in research 
um, in labs that they uh, working on projects that they weren't necessarily the most interested in. Um, and they didn't have the same awesome experience that I had. So I really stress uh, making sure that you're enjoying what you're doing and you're excited about the work that the projects you're gonna be working on. Secondly, research can seem really intimidating um, and beyond anything that you could possibly comprehend at first. Um, and I really just wanna stress that this is 100% normal. Uh, and in fact, it's part of what research is. Research is about answering questions that currently haven't been answered. Um, so while I can't say that the unknowns ever really go away, you get a little bit more comfortable with, with living in that kind of world of uncertainty and, and you kind of find enjoyment in finding the answers to those questions. Um, the last two things I want to say are don't be afraid to talk to your supervisors and explore your own creativity. I was really fortunate to work with Dr. Uh, Granfield this past summer um, and I told her, you know, I want to work on my own project. I want to write my own paper. Uh, I want to explore some of my, my own interests in biomaterials. Um, and she allowed me to take that in stride and, and you know, kind of uh, do an in-depth literature review of the things that I was interested in seeing in biomaterials. Um, and I actually got to work on some of that uh, over the pa my past summer. And lastly, research can be slow at times, especially um, I found that um, in my second summer, you know, working from home, uh, doing a lot more uh, research rather than hands-on work. Um, it can be it can be slow. And so the important thing to remember is to be patient um, and consider taking on another project. You know, if you have extra time, definitely reach out to um, any one of your supervisors. And I'm sure that they can, you know, help you, uh, you know, have the experience that you want to have in the lab. Uh, so I just wanted to say thanks. Uh, to all of my, uh, you know, the, the um, people that have defined my research experience, um, people from the Grandfield Research Group, as well as the Zinomirsky Group. Uh, so this is a picture that we took last summer. Um, it was a very happy time, and I have really fond memories of my research experiences. So at this point, um, I'm actually going to welcome Dr. Grandfield, if she's here, uh, to come forward and say a couple words. Hi there. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Can you hear me? No worries. Okay? Yes, you're all okay, good. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I just, I'll be really quick because I think uh, Andrew and Leah are going to do a way better job than, uh, than I could, but I thought what I could add to this is a little bit about tips for things that you can think of when you're reaching out to a professor to look for a position in the summer. Um, so if you're looking for a job, I think the key thing is try to interact with some of your professors in class. Um, you know, the year I taught Andrew, I think I taught 1,100 students, uh, but I knew him from in class. So when he reached out to me, uh, I immediately was interested in interviewing him because he was participating in my class all the time. And I already knew who Andrew was from seeing him in class. Um, my other advice is reach out really early. Uh, some of the scholarships are due in February. So if you try to get in touch with a a professor in December or January, that's usually a good time. If you wait until April, it's probably too late. Um, and then when you do reach out, try to include everything that your potential advisor would need. So what program you're in, your year. Uh, if you're a first year student, do you have um, one of the Dean's Excellence Scholarships? If you're not a first year student, or even if you are, are you eligible to apply for an NSERC undergrad summer scholarship? Uh, that's really helpful if we know ahead of time if, if people are keen on applying for that. And then include your resume, or sometimes we call this a CV, and any transcripts if you have them available. If you're in first year and first term, you, you might not have that. That helps us uh, see a little bit about who you are right away so that we can expedite the, the process for inviting you for an interview. And then when you come to the interview, um, at least this is the way I interview in, in my group, I try to pull out examples um, from you to learn a little bit more about who you are and how you would work in a lab. Um, I don't think, well, I think one of the things that students often think is they don't have any relevant skills, but if you've had a summer job, if you volunteered, uh, which all of you had to do in high school, or if you worked in a team, uh, all of those skills are really valuable skills that you can bring examples in to the interview. So I think ahead of time, think of how you've demonstrated problem solving. Research is all about problem solving. So if you can have an example to back up how you go through that process, that's a, a great tip. Um, also have examples of how you work in a team and independently. And you'll spend a lot of time on your own, but also working with a group of people how you manage your time, and then, like I said, those experiences from maybe a summer job you've had or a volunteer experience. How could you translate that to research? And it's also nice to think about your long-term goals. Uh, I like to learn a little bit about the people who work for me and what they aspire to do and how I can help them achieve that uh, in the time that they spend with my group. So 
those are just some of my tips I have and don't be afraid just reach out and don't be discouraged I think my first time I looked for a summer job I had to email lots and lots of professors so uh, don't don't get discouraged and just keep trying and especially if you're in first or second year it's really challenging to get a position and if you can't keep trying it in your later years and that's all I wanted to add thanks for inviting me to, to join in Thank you.